Hello, astronomy enthusiasts. Uh, welcome to the uh, Dunlap Institute Astronomy Trivia Night. Uh, my name is Ilana. We're just going to wait a few minutes uh, for people to join. Uh, in the meantime, feel free to use the chat feature uh, to introduce yourself or just ask questions. Uh, and uh, if you want to play along tonight, um, you go to kahoot.it, uh, you enter the game pin that you see on the screen, which is uh, 450-6636, and uh, then you can play along. And uh, for those joining at the moment, uh, if you want to be able to win prizes tonight, be sure to put in your actual email address, and we promise we won't use it for anything except for contacting you if you win. Uh, so go ahead and do that when you sign up. So it looks like we've got a few people joining, and uh, I'll just wait a couple of minutes uh, for more people to join, and, uh, and then we'll get started. So exciting to see so many of you joining this evening. So thanks once again to all those of you who are joining. We're going to get started with our astronomy trivia night in just a couple of minutes, uh, waiting for a large crew of you to join in on the games. Uh, for those just uh, signing in, uh, please go to uh, kahoot.it, uh, or you can join with the Kahoot app if you happen to have it, and you can enter the game pin 450-6636 and that will get you signed in. Remember that if you want to win a prize, uh, you must put your actual email address. And once again, we won't contact you unless, you know, you've actually won one of the prizes. And while you're waiting, uh, Feel free to uh, put where you're <laughs> watching from in the chat. Um, make sure that, you know, we know where you're coming from. That'd be fun. Uh, if you have any questions about astronomy, you can also put those in the chat. We'll do our best to answer them. Also, keep in mind that there is uh, there may be a couple of seconds between what I'm streaming and what you're seeing. Um, so. Uh, be patient, and if you notice that there's a significant lag between the game and what you're seeing on the stream, uh, just refresh your stream and it should uh, be a bit better. All right. Wow, 53 of you already. That's amazing. So uh, we're going to get started now. Uh, I'll introduce myself first. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Ilana McDonald. Uh, I am a, an astronomer at the David A. Dunlap for Astronomy and Astrophysics. And tonight I come to you on behalf of uh, the Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics uh, to host this really fun games night. So for those of you just joining, uh, to participate in the games, just to go to kahoot.it, um, use the uh, game pin 4506636, and uh, be sure to enter your actual email address if you want to win some prizes. And we will only use that email address to contact you if you do win a prize. So uh, as we get started, um, I'd like to do a land acknowledgement since we are here uh, on, on uh, Aboriginal land that, you know, should be acknowledged. So uh, first of all, uh, we would wish to 
acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the uh, Huron, Wendat, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity uh, to work on this land. So thank you. Um, and so now that we've got a good crew that's already signed in, we can start uh, the, uh, the games, let the games begin. So if you're uh, joining a little late, um, you can still join in, uh, and I'll give instructions on that a little later. So tonight we're going to be uh, talking about the solar system. So something, you know, relatively close to the Earth in astronomy uh, that, um, you know, hopefully you'll have some fun learning about tonight. Before we get started, we have a few rules. Um, tonight, anyone can play, uh, but we can only send prizes to Canadian addresses outside of Quebec. So, sorry, Quebec, and anyone outside of Canada. Um, people who have graduate degrees in astronomy or sub-equivalent expertise are unfortunately not eligible to win prizes. We just want to make it a fair playing ground for everyone, so if you have a PhD in astronomy, uh, you can't win a prize, unfortunately. And uh, if you've attended one of our previous trivia nights and you already won a prize, you're not eligible to win a prize again, unfortunately, either. Um, we just want to spread the joy as much as possible. Um, if you're under the age of 18, make sure that you have your parents' permission to play. Uh, so this is an all-ages event. You're, you're welcome to play even if you are under the age of 18. Um, and that being said, uh, because this is a family-friendly event, we want to keep the chat uh, respectful and family-friendly. So, you know, watch your language, be nice, all that stuff. And uh, finally, if you want to win a prize, you have to use your real email address in Kahoot. And once again, we promise that we won't use it for any reason except to contact the winners. All right, so now the fun part, tonight's prizes. So the first prize is a Celestron Power Seeker telescope. Uh, so this really nice uh, telescope made by a really good company, Celestron. Uh, so that's what you can win if you get first place tonight. Uh, the second prize is this super cool 500 piece Mars puzzle, which is bound to keep you busy for many, many, many hours of fun. And then the third prize is this super comfy looking and super awesome glow in the dark constellation blanket. So uh, try to answer those questions quickly and maybe you'll get one of tonight's really amazing prizes. All right, so we're gonna get started now with our questions. So first question, the International Space Station orbits which object? If anything, it's in space. Um, so we've got a lot of people answering. So you're going to have about 30 seconds to answer each question. So get those answers in as quickly as possible. If you're joining us a little bit late, um, you can still play. Uh, just go to kahoot.it and enter the game pin that you see at the bottom of the screen, which is 4506636. All right. So first question. Most of you got it, except for one person. Uh, and the International Space Station orbits the Earth. Excellent job to the rest of you. So let's see what the scoreboard is at. It looks like Am Amusing Raven is in the lead so far. And Daring B is in a close second. Now remember that the faster you answer these questions, the more points you get. So try to answer those questions quickly. Let's go on to our next question. According to the currently accepted definition of a planet, how many planets are there in our solar system? So is it eight, nine, 10, or millions? How many planets are there in our solar system? All right, a lot of very quick answerers. We've got about 10 seconds left. What, how many planets are there in our solar system? All right, time's up. There are eight planets in our solar system. So there are, um, well, 
First of all, let's let's look at the scoreboard once again. Amusing R Raven is still in the lead um, with Happy Wolf now in a close second. So let's talk about planets. And I know this is a contentious subject matter. And some of us of a certain age would have learned in school that there are nine planets, which would have been Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Now, we no longer can consider Pluto to be one of those planets uh, because the International Astronomical Union decided that the definition of a planet is uh, an object which is spherical in shape, going around the sun, and also uh, large enough to have gravitationally cleared out its orbit. Now, Pluto is located in this belt of debris um, called the Kuiper Belt, and so it hasn't met that third uh, requirement, which means that Pluto is considered a dwarf planet and not a planet. So um, there are many, many other dwarf planets in our in our solar system, such as uh, Eris, Makemake, Haimea. There's a lot of really cool ones, but now the International Astronomical Union, uh, very controversially, I must say, doesn't consider Pluto to be a planet. Alas. All right, let's go on to our next question. So here's an excellent question. How many moons are there in the solar system that are larger than the smallest planet in our solar system? So are there zero, one, two, or three moons in our solar system that are larger than the smallest planet in our solar system? We've got about 10 seconds left. Get your answers in as quick as possible. All right, time is up. So it looks like uh, only 19 of you got the answer correct. Uh, it's a very tricky question. There are two moons in the solar system that are larger than the smallest planet in our solar system. So. The smallest planet in our solar system is the one that's closest to the sun, which is Mercury. And uh, oh, back to the, uh, oh my goodness, Amiable Duck has been pushed out of first place. And now Legend Glider is in first place. Excellent job. So let's talk about some of the smaller worlds in our solar system. So these are uh, some of the rocky objects that we have in the solar system. So we have uh, Mars, which is a little bit smaller than the Earth. Um, and then the next two largest objects after Mars are Ganymede and Titan. So Ganymede is the largest moon of Jupiter, which is the largest moon in the solar system. And Titan is the largest moon of Saturn and the second largest moon of the solar system. And both of those objects, both of those moons are larger than the planet Mercury. So it's sort of interesting, you know, before we talked about how Pluto isn't a planet. Oh, it's so sad. But there are a lot of objects in our solar system that could be considered planets if they were just in a different location in the solar system. So those those uh, definitions can be a little bit, you know, uh, arbitrary. All right, let's move on to our next question. In September of 2023, the OSIRIS-REx mission will return to Earth with a sample taken from which place? So will it be the atmosphere of Jupiter, the dust on the moon, the surface of an asteroid, or rocks from Mars? So which place will the OSIRIS-REx mission return to Earth with a sample from? Got about five seconds left. All right, time's up. And most of you were correct. Amazing job, everyone that OSIRIS-REx is gonna be collecting a sample taken from the surface of an asteroid. So this is gonna be really, really cool. This little spacecraft has gone to the surface of an asteroid, collected material, and it will bring it back to the Earth in September of 2023. So this is gonna be really, really cool. It's gonna give us this pristine sample of material from the very, early solar system, which has barely changed since then. And, and we're all very excited for, for that date when it'll come back with the samples. All right, let's take another look at the scoreboard. How are you all doing? Legend Glider still in the lead uh, and uh, Green Swan is, is catching up. 
So excellent job, everyone, so far. Our next question, which planet's orbit can't be fully explained by Newton's law of gravity? So here we have a nice image of Isaac Newton. Uh, and one of these planets, its orbit cannot be fully explained by Newton's law of gravity. Which one is it? We've got about 15 seconds left. Which planet's orbit can't be fully explained by Newton's law of gravity? All right, so it looks like we have our answers. Just readjusting the answers a bit. I was told that I was blocking off some of the, uh, the answers. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, so a lot of you got the correct answer that Mercury, uh, its orbit cannot be fully explained by Newton's law of gravity. So uh, as it turns out, Mercury has something uh, called a perihelion precession, where it has this sort of uh, oval orbit that rotates a little bit every year. And that couldn't fully be explained by Newton's law of gravity. And it wasn't until uh, general relativity came along, uh, Einstein's theory of general relativity, that this uh, slight precession was explained. So uh, Mercury is uh, the correct answer in this case. And uh, 29 of you got it. Good job to all of you. All right, let's see the scoreboard. Green Swan has made it to the lead. Congratulations. Moving on to the next question. This is a true or false question. So in 1985, the Soviet Union flew a balloon more than 11,000 kilometers through the atmosphere of Venus. Is this true or is this false? So in 1985, did the Soviet Union fly a balloon more than 11,000 kilometers through the atmosphere of Venus? About 10 seconds left. And most of you got the answer correct. We've got 64 uh, people who guessed that it was true that this the Soviet Union flew a balloon more than 11,000 kilometers through the atmosphere of Venus. And this is, in fact, a true fact. Looking again at our scoreboard, we've got Green Swan maintaining their lead with Prairie Bobcat in a close second. So excellent job, everyone. Our next question, uh, a little bit of a pop culture one. In the uh, 2015 science fiction novel Armada by Ernest Cline, where do the aliens come from? So perhaps a little bit niche, but if you've uh, read this novel, Armada, then you might know the answer. Where did the aliens come from in this novel? About uh, seven seconds left. And most of you got the answer, that's excellent, that the aliens in Armada came from Jupiter's moon Europa. And uh, Europa is a pretty cool place uh, because it is an icy moon of Jupiter. And because of Jupiter's gravity, turns out there's actually a lot of liquid water under the frozen surface of Europa. And so it is possible where there's liquid water that life could develop. And so Europa is one of the places in the solar system where it would be pretty cool to look for, uh, you know, some sort of extraterrestrial life. Looking again at our scoreboard, Prairie Bobcat, excellent job. This is a close, close game tonight. Uh, you've now made it to the lead with Green Swan, uh, very close in second place. Our next question, which of the following planets does not have rings? So is it Jupiter, Venus, Uranus, or Neptune? So you've got about 10 seconds left. Which of the following planets does not have rings? 
Is it Jupiter, Venus, Neptune, or Uranus? All right, time's up, and most of you got the correct answer. Excellent job. Um, the planet Venus does not have rings, but the rest of these planets do. So a little known fact about the solar system is that many planets in our solar system actually do have a system of rings. So Saturn is the most famous of the planets that has rings, um, but Jupiter, Neptune, and Uranus also have a smaller set of rings. And in the case of Jupiter and Neptune, they're so faint that you can just barely make them out um, and you need very, very sensitive instruments to actually uh, detect those rings, but they're still there. So looking once again at our scoreboard, We've got Green Swan back in the lead. Excellent job with Amiable Duck close behind. This is a tight race tonight, folks. Our next question is, which of the following planets are near twins of one another? So which of these planets in our solar system are very, very similar, very near twins? Is it Earth and Mars, Uranus and Neptune, Mercury and Pluto, or Saturn and Neptune? And excellent job to all of you. Just barely uh, most of you got the correct answer. Uranus and Neptune, which are the two farthest planets from the sun, are extremely similar to one another. They have roughly the same composition, roughly the same size, and they're both what we call ice giants. So these huge, huge balls of icy gas, I guess you could say, um, that are near the edge of the solar system. A lot of you said Earth and Mars, but Earth and Mars are actually pretty different in that Earth is fairly a lot larger than Mars is. Um, and so Uranus and Neptune are actually much more similar than, than the Earth and Mars are. All right, moving on to our scoreboard once again. We have Amiable Duck back in the lead with Groovy Ferret catching up. You guys are all doing amazingly tonight. I'm very, very proud of you all. Let's see the next question. How many human spacecraft have landed on the surface of a moon of Jupiter? So is it zero, one, three, or six? So how many human spacecraft, that is little spaceships made by humans, have landed on the surface of a moon of Jupiter? So it looks like most of you got the correct answer. As it turns out, we've never landed a spacecraft on the surface of a moon of Jupiter. We've had lots of spacecraft that had visited this gas giant and visited the moons of Jupiter, but none of them have ever actually landed on the surface of a moon of Jupiter. So hopefully in some upcoming missions, that will no longer be the case. Looking once again at our scoreboard, we have Groovy Ferret now in the lead with Radiant Frog in a close second. Once again, a very tight race. Moving on to our next question. In 2001, American pop rock band Train released an album called Drops of What? So this was a song that was popular about 20 years ago now. Um, and uh, released by Train, and uh, it was an album called Drops of Something or Other. What was that something or other? All right, time's up. So most of you got it once again. It was Drops of Jupiter, and uh, it's a very, very catchy tune and a fun album. Moving on to the next, oh, looking at the scoreboard once again, we've got Groovy Ferret in the lead still and get racing ahead of everyone else with uh, Prairie Bobcat catching, catching up. Our next question, which spacecraft is the only one to have visited all of the outer planets of our solar system? So which spacecraft has visited all of the outer planets of our solar system. Is it Voyager 2, Pioneer 1, Vega 3, or New Horizons? 
So which one of these spacecraft visited all of the planets of our outer solar system? All right, time's up. And once again, most of you got the correct answer here. It was Voyager 2, which is the only man-made spacecraft to have ever visited all of the planets of the outer solar system. So it visited Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And it is still the only spacecraft that came from Earth to have visited the planets Uranus and Neptune close up. So all of the close up images we have of those two planets come from Voyager 2. Looking once again at our scoreboard, we have Groovy Ferret, who has maintained their lead with Prairie Bobcat still in second place. Moving on to the next question, NASA astronaut Jessica Watkins may become the first woman to set foot on the moon as part of NASA's what program? So is it part of NASA's Artemis program, Apollo program, Athena program, or Astraea program? So Jessica Watkins will become, may become, the first woman to set foot on the moon as part of which NASA program? About five seconds left to get those answers in. All right. Most of you got this correct once again. It was part of the Artemis program, or will be part of the Artemis program. Um, Artemis was the uh, Greek goddess of the moon, so it seems appropriate that Jessica Watkins would become the first woman to set foot on the moon as part of the Artemis program. Looking once again at the scoreboard, Dr. Piranha has moved to the lead. That is so exciting. Excellent job to you. And Prairie Bobcat is still in second place. All right, looking at our next question. So Neptune is how many times farther from the sun than the Earth is? So is Neptune 10 times farther, 30 times farther, 50 times farther, or 75 times farther? So how much farther is Neptune from the sun than the Earth is? All right, about three seconds remaining. And it looks like 35 got you the correct answer. Neptune is 30 times farther from the sun than the Earth is. And fun fact, the Earth is about eight light minutes from the sun. So a bit of quick math. That means that Neptune is four light hours from the sun. Um, which means that the light from the sun actually takes four hours to get all the way to Neptune, which is pretty far away, uh, light being a very fast traveler. Moving back to the scoreboard, Dr. Piranha has maintained their lead and Prairie Bobcat is still in second place. Good job to the two of you. Our next question, in the, sci in the 2019 sci-fi blockbuster, The Wandering Earth, Humanity has to avoid a collision between Earth and what other object? So in The Wandering Earth, did humanity have to avoid a collision between Earth and the Sun, between the Earth and a comet, between the Earth and Jupiter, or between the Earth and the Moon? So which of these objects did the Earth have to avoid a collision with in The Wandering Earth? All right. Time's up. Once again, this was a tricky one if you haven't seen the movie, uh, but in The Wandering Earth, humanity had to avoid a collision between the Earth and the planet Jupiter, which is the largest planet in our solar system. Moving back to our scoreboard, we still have Dr. Piranha in the lead with Prairie Bobcat in second place. Moving on to our final question of the evening. The Oort cloud that surrounds our solar system is made up of what type of stuff? Is it made up of gas, made up of dust, made up of comets, or made up of dwarf planets? So which of these objects is the Oort cloud made up of? 
We've got about five seconds left. And the correct answer, which almost all of you got, is comments. So many of the really, really long period comments that come and visit the Earth come from the uh, Oort cloud. So for example, uh, in the late 90s, the uh, comet Hale-Bopp came close to the sun and it was gorgeous. You could see it really easily with the naked eye. Um, and it had a period of about a few thousand years. So it takes a few thousand years for this comet to go around the sun. Um, and that comet came from all the way out at the very, very edge of the solar system from this big cloud of comets called the Oort cloud. All right, we've reached the end of our trivia night. Let's see who our winners are. So in third place, we have Caring Dragon, congratulations. In second place, Rocky Stork. And our grand winner of the night in first place is Classy Hen. So a whole new set of uh, winners. So congratulations to uh, everyone who played. I hope that you had a bit of fun tonight and you learned a little bit about astronomy. So uh, that's a wrap for uh, this trivia night. But um, if you uh, are interested in you know, attending a future trivia night uh, put on by the Dunlap Institute, uh, feel free to uh, like this video, to subscribe to the Dunlap Institute channel, because we will be having more events like this in the future. So those three winners, uh, if you put in your email addresses, we'll be contacting you uh, within the next few days uh, to, to send you your prizes. Um, I hope that everybody had a really great time and uh, I hope that the rest of you have a really, really great night. Good night, everyone.